What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Flying Brown's Garage. This is part three. Hopefully the final part of the generally uh, slammed mower dirt track racer build. Um, I've got the carburetor off right now. Um, got it over here on the table about to disassemble it, see what's wrong with it, see why it won't shut off, and then put it back together and put this thing back on the racer and we'll hear this thing run. So I'm going to stand still on this project. Um, having a problem with the carburetor. I had a Nikki and it was overflowing. And same problem with this one. So got a shut off valve on it for now. We're actually going to just sit this thing back outside. Um, I'm going to bring the beast up in here and do some work on it. And we'll get back to this project when I get the material to get it right. So, back with good news. Thanks to our new channel sponsor, Hypa, who reached out to us after watching one of our videos, offered to kind of partner up with us in order to promote their product. So, with that being said, let's get into the unboxing of this carburetor. We'll check it out. We'll get it put on the, the general and see how it performs. But we have our carburetor here they sent us um, for free, which was very nice of them. Thank you, uh, Hypa. Appreciate that. Um, they wanted to contribute to the build here. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave a link for this carburetor down below in the description. I'm also going to leave a link to their uh, website down in the description. Um, I've went through their website. They seem to have some pretty good stuff, so um, I'd suggest checking them out. Um, they are kind of a uh, their motto is uh, doing it. Uh, what would you say? Doing it on a budget. So they're budget-friendly folks. Decent prices. Um, I'm pretty sure it's decent stuff. Um, but we're going to check it out. So let's actually unbox this thing on camera. Alright, so we are unboxing our carburetor from Hypa. We're going to check this out. Oh, it comes with uh, a gasket and hose clamps. Looks like your adjustment cap for the adjustment screw. Comes with a little bit of fuel hose. You packaged it well. I also like the fact that it came with a uh, little kit. Gasket and stuff. I already like the color. It's uh, like a pewter color. That's a nice carburetor. It's got that new carburetor smell. I'm digging this. Heck yeah. Huge thank you to Hypa for watching our videos and reaching out to us and taking a chance on uh, the channel here. Um, it's nice to finally kind of get a little bit of a uh, recognition but uh, digging the carburetor it looks good so we're gonna actually pop this thing on the general and see what it's about 
right, so we have our old carburetor off. It's an old Walbro. I did have a Nikki on there before. Both of them are junk. Um, the Walbro is more of a uh, color carb. Um, this carburetor is more of a Nikki style, as you see. Um, I do not use the valve sensor, so I'm actually going to take this one out and just put one in that is already clipped, because I'm going to save this one since it's new, and then we'll put the carburetor on. Now that we have our sensor installed, technically it's a plug at this point, um, all that does is it restricts the fuel flow if the carburetor is turned and for off-road mowers, drifting mowers, racing mowers that's not good because once you're going a certain speed or you're taking a turn or whatever and your gas gets sloshed to one side it'll actually shut it off so I like to do away with them clip them whatever you want to call it and then uh, reinstall but now that we have our carburetor ready to go, we're going to go ahead and install. We are going to use the new hardware instead of my homemade gasket, which has served its purpose. But it's time to put some new hardware on it, new line, all that good stuff. So let's get it installed. All right, now that we got our new carburetor installed from Hypa, which looks really good. I love that color. It's different. Pretty carburetor. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put the top cover back on. The only thing is, is the spout where it hooks up kind of comes in so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do what we did before and have the vacuum pump on it so let's get that hooked up fired up all right so we have our brand spanking new carburetor on down there looking good looking good had to route my line up and around this time I got a bolt that was uh, smooth up top so it won't rub a uh, indention in my stuff. I might actually also go back and slide some old hose over that just to kind of like that. So everything is hooked up. Um, what we need to do now is Actually, I need to tighten the back bolts of the engine cover and put the battery on. And then we can test this thing to see if it'll uh, start and run. Well, the time has come. It's time to see if this old girl will run off its own supply. We're going to choke it.
kill it for the night because it is uh, pretty late but I'd have to say it runs really good um, HIPAA parts are pretty good I was having such a problem with that carburetor um, it was plug and play uh, HIPAA or HIPAA does say that they have uh, all their carburetors uh, tuned before they ship them out so that is always a good thing um, like I said I will leave their links down below I will leave a link to this carburetor this is a Briggs & Stratton single cylinder carb um, like I said it's no different than a Nikki it's just a replacement uh, I think better um, I just I like the carburetor. I like the way it looks. I really like the way it runs, and that's that's just it. It's perfect. It's I can't ask for better. Thank you, Hypa, for contacting me and sending this out to me. Um, it was really a pleasure doing business with you, and plan to uh, hopefully do more in the future. So, with that being said. We're going to go ahead and move to the rear end. I want to cut and drop the fenders some. So we're going to do that. So let's get to it. So I want to take a quick second and pause the video and ask y'all to help me with something. I need y'all to do me a favor go down and hit that subscribe button smash it smash that bell uh, go like the videos uh, you know tell me where you're from say hi whatever ask me questions it doesn't matter um, I'm trying to get to a thousand subs um, and I cannot do that without your guys's help um, so definitely go subscribe check out Facebook the uh, Instagram, the Snapchat, and now we have a TikTok. You can just go type in Flying Brian's Garage and you will find me. Um, all the profile pictures are the same. It's easy to find. Um, and yeah, give me some likes, give me some subscribes, and all that good stuff. I'm trying to build this and I can't build it without everybody's help. So, hope you guys are enjoying the videos. Uh, you know, got a lot of good videos coming, constantly coming, um, and I'm constantly sourcing new projects, so stay tuned, and with that being said, let's get back to the video. So, we can now mark carburetor. 
off of the list. So all we have to do left is the trans, brakes, and shifter, which those are all part four. We'll just go ahead and part four. So that's all part four. We got livery and lower the seat and fenders. I'm going to be doing the lowering the seat and the fenders. My wife is going to actually be doing the livery. Um, cause she's better at drawing and stuff. She's going to do it hand drawn with a paint marker. So uh, hopefully that turns out good, which I'm sure it will. And uh, let's get to lowering the seat and the fenders. All right. So we got the general lifted up here on a little makeshift lift. Going to go ahead and start with the rear end instead. We're going to do livery last. Um, so we're going to go ahead and cut this rear end out, drop these fenders, and get everything kind of sitting better. And then... Uh, get the front cut out and do a skid plate because what we're having a problem with is we're having a problem with this hitting the ground so we're actually going to take this out cut it out get it level with the axle and hopefully we will resolve that problem skid plate this all right we have removed our rear fenders. Um, I'm going to cut here and the same on the other side to give way for this to kind of come back. Um, and then I'm going to modify the bracket for it to sit on and we'll see how it turns out. Alright, we got our notches cut out and grinded down. So now our fenders will actually sit like they should. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get our piece here cut and mocked up. And I'll like cut it here and then cut it here and then slam it. We now have our bracket chopped down. Put it in on both sides. We're going to put this back on. Kind of wondering if I can Alright, so we got the fenders back on. They are nice and slammed. There's just a little bit on each side. Might have to end up rolling it, but the bracket in the back lined up perfectly and it looks pretty good for slamming the fenders. All right, we have successfully lowered seat. and fenders. Now let's get on to the skid plating and cutting out the front, which, let me get my lights here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna come up here, we're gonna pop these two bolts out. One, two, take this bottom plate out we're going to cut this down to the axle and then we'll skid plate that area so we took our tie rod off that had the angle iron on there and I filed it down and grinded it and cut it and all that good shit and made it round or as round as it's gonna be that way it don't get hit by anything um, 
Now we're going to go ahead, cut this piece out, cut the other piece out on the other side, get all that out, get it level with the axle, and then we can start building our skid plate coming off the front here and down to this back point. All right, so we just got our excess cut off. We're going to go ahead and start with our skid plating, get it fastened all the way down to that point there, and then we'll stop. Just enough to give the front a, uh, a sliding point, that way it don't grab on anything, and if it does hit on the bottom, and bottom's out in the front end, it just kind of slides and glides over it, so. All right, so we got our skid plate metal cut out. Ready to go. Once I get the top tacked on, I will straighten that edge out some. Let's get it welded up on there. And then we'll have skid plating, front end done, fenders done. Alright, so we got our skid plate on and in place. It's looking pretty good. Brought it all the way back to that stopping point like I said I would. So we now have full front skid. It looks good. And I'm sure it'll operate just as well. So we can go over here. Mark our skid plate and cut out front. Now all we have to do livery and my wife is getting the paint at the store as we speak so we are on the way to having part three done and over with so let's get this thing off of the lift let's get it on the ground see what it looks like all right she is sitting on the ground look at that thing clean get that skid plate action wow thing looks sick guys let's get a that's her So I'm about to get the hood out of the uh, storage shed out here, get it a little cleaned up, get it in the house. My wife has gotten back. She did not find paint markers, but she did find some blue, white, and black paint to do up the lettering, and she got a brush. So let's get that hood in there, let her get to this. That way we can get this done and looking good. Here we go. Randy down there playing with the dogs. <laughs> This is how the livery's going so far. It's actually looking quite good. She's in the process of it right now. But the other looks just like that. Looking good, looking good. Can't wait to see it on the on the mower. Alright, so we got some good news. We have our livery done. Um, I'm actually going to pull this out of the shop so we get a better look at it. Um, I got us a new tow rig that I came up with the other day. Ha -ha. I don't use my trailer a whole lot since I don't leave the house that much no more. So, decided to start using the trailer for the yard. The way I get much use of it as I can. So I had an extra tow receiver that I welded all the way around on there. And I took a really sturdy uh, snapper lawnmower blade. 
can see how thick that sucker is. And I cut it to size and used it as a brace. And I got my chain hooked up to everything. I know it'll pull it. I've actually already pulled uh, trees and I had this thing loaded up with huge tires and also had the John Deere on it and uh, it's got tires full of water so little red dude does pretty good so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and move the van get it out the way so I can get the uh, general out the door onto the trailer and we're probably going to take it up to the carport up here because I have other things we need to do to it. And then we'll take a look at it and see what it looks like with the hood on and the livery done. So let's get this thing loaded up and get it up there. Alright, got it out the shop. Let's go and get it up to the carport. Alright, we are ready for the reveal. We are. It's not done yet. <clears throat> Still needs a transaxle. Is there any transaxle guys out there? Sure could use an MST two oh six. Contact me. Find Brian2293 at gmail.com. Went ahead and cleaned it up. I still need to. Really, it's just the transaxle. We're probably going to put Flying Brown's garage somewhere on it. Just like my wife did here. Um, probably under the seat. I do have a original uh, tag coming. The General Lee tag I'm going to put back there under the flap. So it'll be mounted to the plate itself. Um, but other than that, it looks good. I'm digging it. Hope everybody else digs it too. Let me know what you think about it down in the comments. And no, I'm not putting the flag on it. No room. But she runs good thanks to Hypo Parts. Um, big thanks to you guys for the carburetor and taking a chance on this channel. Um, I would suggest using hyper parts especially if you're trying to get your machine running on a decent budget they have good parts the carburetor that I uh, received is brand new and excellent and comes with a little small kit so you got the gaskets and all that stuff um, can't complain good prices go check out their website uh, I'm gonna leave a link down below for uh, hypa.com or whatever their website is I think it's hypa something else Com, but the uh, link will be down below. Um, also, the link to this carburetor will be down below in the description. It is an uh, exact replacement for a Nikki. Um, huge thanks to Shaggy with Shaggy Small Engines on YouTube. Y'all should go check him out. Um, big thanks to him for uh, contributing because um, I couldn't have done this build without him. Um, big thanks to my friend Daniel who came down and helped me throw the transaxle in. Um, big thanks to my wife who was a huge help. And uh, anybody else that had a help in this project, uh, big thank you. Um, shout out to you. I surely appreciate it. Um, go down and check out some of the older videos. We've got a ton of those down there. Um, also, go check out the Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and the TikTok. Uh, everything has the same profile picture as the YouTube channel, except for the Snapchat. It is an avatar. 
but you can type in your Flying Brian's Garage and all the search engines and those platforms and you will find me. Um, and be sure to like the video. Subscribe if you haven't done so yet because I don't know why you haven't done that. It's a button somewhere around. Um, and yeah, comment down below. Let me know what you think of this project. And uh, until then, this one's going to be on hold until I find a transmission. So unfortunately, part four will be quite delayed unless I get a transaxle soon. So, like I said, any transaxle guys out there, contact me. Flying Brian's Garage, or Flying Brian 2293 at gmail.com. Um, I'd love to work with you, and I sure do need a a good six speed so um, and with all that being said I will see you guys on the next episode